Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and today I've got a project that I did back in 2009 before I started making YouTube videos and it's always been one of my favorites. Uh, this baby panda is fairly easy to put together because it uses the cardboard pattern on the inside. You can download the pattern if you want to use it or, or draw your own. And I recommend this uh, to a lot of my younger readers uh, who write in and, and want a project that they'd be able to do fairly easily. I made mine uh, lying down and holding a little rubber ball, but you can have yours sitting up doing anything you want them to. So let me show you how this was done. Like I said, the pattern is out on my website. You can download it and print it on your printer. Uh, you can make it bigger if you want to or smaller. It's totally up to you. You will want to print two of them so you can cut the body out of one and um, cut the pieces of the arms and legs and feet out of the other one. You'll want to trace around them onto some cardboard and then cut out the cardboard. Uh, the first thing that you do is you have once you have your pattern cut out, make the head into a nice round ball. Put uh, crumpled paper and masking tape on both sides of the head. Do the same for the body. Now, since both the tummy and the head are perfectly round, just go ahead and, and keep adding paper and masking tape until you have that shape. And then you want to add less uh, paper, obviously quite a lot less, in order to make the muzzle because it isn't nearly as fat as the head itself. Tape the arm and leg patterns on just exactly the way you want them so that it has the right posture and then put the feet patterns on the ends of the legs so that they're um, at right angles so that it looks like feet on the ends of a leg. And then start adding crumpled paper and masking tape to the arms and legs you will want a little bit of crumpled paper on the tops and the bottom of the feet but not over those claws. Now it's time to add the paper mache. I just used newspaper that was torn into strips and used a raw flour and water paste. There's recipes for it out on my blog if you need them. I added a nose with some newsprint, just folded up into a triangle and stuck right on the end of his muzzle. I made a smile by rolling up some newsprint so that there would be a lip. And the ears are just a piece of light cardboard and then covered with newspaper. Go ahead and look at some photographs online of baby pandas so you know for sure where those ears go. Once the ears have been attached with some paper mache strips, you want to add uh, a roll of a crumpled newspaper right around the edge. That gives that feeling of uh, extra fur right around the outside edge of the ear. I use some brown paper for the very last layer. I don't know that you really need to. Um, sometimes it's easier to get a smoother surface if you use the uh, newspaper, but if you do um, use brown paper, make sure that it gets nicely saturated with your wet paste because that does help smooth it over. Put just the tiniest amount of paper mache over the claws because you want them to stay nice and sharp. I let my bear uh, dry sitting out on a fence post out in the garden. Um, I don't know what the neighbors thought, but um, it was kind of fun. I used some drywall joint compound right out of the bucket to make some uh, fur marks. I don't think I would do it that way again. I would add at least a little bit of white glue. That would keep the joint compound from cracking. Now this might be a good point to mention that you shouldn't really give this panda to a small child or a baby. It's going to go straight into their mouth and you don't want them eating any more art supplies whether they come from the art store or from the hardware store like mine do. I painted the uh, white parts with a warm white acrylic paint. I just added just a, a dab of um, probably yellow ochre to it just to warm it up just a little bit. And then after the white was dry, I um, drew the pattern where the black parts would be with a pencil on there. I put a little bit of brown into some black acrylic paint just to warm that up a little bit too. And then I painted the black parts. There's a tiny spot of white on the eyes to show the reflection and I did that using the end of a toothpick dipped in the white paint. When I made my panda I brought out the, um, the texture of the fur using some varnish that had a little bit of paint mixed in with it. If I did that again I would use acrylic glazing liquid mixed with some burnt umber. I didn't use it before just because I hadn't found that product yet. It works really nice for that sort of thing. You just uh, brush it on and then brush it right back off again and it fills in that, uh, that nice texture with just a very, very light amount of color. 
And this is how he looks when he's all done. He's all got his varnish on there. He's all painted up. I did find this little green ball that I thought he would like to play with. Um, it kind of popped off at one time <laughs> because I didn't use any hot glue or anything to stick it on there firmly and that was kind of a mistake. So there you go. Um, like I said, you can use my pattern. It's out on my blog. I'm going to put a link to it down below. If you make a panda, I sure do hope you'll come out to my website and show it off. Come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.